Hello again everybody, it's Isabel Marie coming from my porch on a beautiful clear day. It's um, almost fall I think. So my next video is going to be about the um, Chicken Soup for the Mother's Soul book and why I think it's so important people grasp the concept of why these books are successful. Um, I love this book. This is one of the first books that I had bought um, for myself as soon as I became a, an official mother and didn't really know what to expect but I read it and I fell in love with it the first time I mean it just made me feel so good inside and I connected with it and it just was an absolute nice thing the nicest thing if you have any mother any woman out there any female even if she's not a mom and she wants to be or she will be or she's a very good caretaker buy this book I'm telling you it is one of the best gifts you can give to any woman and they will appreciate it so much so uh, I was thinking about it, like, why are the chicken soups for the mother's soul so, you know, important to mothers? Or why are the chicken soup books so big? I mean, they've been everywhere. Jack Canfield, we all know, has been on The Secret, has been on Oprah, and they have, like, every kind of book you could think of. You know, chicken soup for the teenager soul, for the African-American soul, for the um, nurse's soul, for the mother, for the dad, you know, the fathers, the daughters. I mean, they have them for everyone, but that's the point. That is why they're so successful. For one, Jack Canfield has always been somebody who's passionate about what he does. And he had that concept for a while before he was able to get it out there. And because if there's anything in life that you do with passion, you're going to succeed no matter what. And the money is not the end result. It's just the thing that kind of happens. But the reason why these books have been such a great seller, I mean, look, number one, New York Times and USA Today bestseller. You know, and the reason why is because each book that they put out has a target market. It's chicken soup for the mother's soul. That means moms are going to buy them, or grandmothers, and they're going to relate to them. So instead of just putting like a, a book together that's kind of like chicken soup for everybody's soul, and they go and they put like, you know, one story here, one story there, and people are like, well, I'm not a Boy Scout. Why am I going to have like a, a story on a Boy Scout? They're going to want to skip that. They make it a point to deliver each book with a target market in mind, with a target audience in mind. You know, I would never go pick up, you know, chicken soup for the, the father's soul because I'm not a father and I wouldn't relate to it. But because they have a target market in, in mind and they have a concept and they only work with that market, they only get um, stories and, and compile them together from people who are mothers or people who are teenagers or nurses or whatever book that they're working on is, that's why they're so successful is because they don't sit there and try to be everything to everybody. They go out there and they find who they want to work with next. You know, and yes, it's one person and they're doing a great, you know, compilation of different things, but that's the point. You could do the same thing in business, but you have to start with something that you know first. I related to this book because I'm a mother. And the thing is, is when you're able to figure out your target market, first you've got to be passionate, then figure out your target market, market, and then go out there and address the needs that they have. They want to feel connected to the book. And then when you're able to go in a book or a video or a DVD or a website or whatever it is you're passionate about, and you're able to connect and invoke feeling, you know, when I read that book, I feel so good because I go, oh, I remember that, you know. Even when I watch, you know, a program and they're showing a woman who's pregnant and what she's going through, I'm like, oh, I remember that. You know, it invokes a feeling inside of me. And when you're able to invoke passion and feeling and, and, and movement inside somebody, that's what's going to make you successful. Not all the replicated websites, not all the DVD and the brochures that are generic to everybody because it's like, you know, um, Talking about a neo entrepreneur, somebody who's not even on the internet, they're gonna be like, "What the hell is a neo entrepreneur, and why should I even care? I don't even have a computer." You know, just like gas prices to an Amish person, they don't care about gas prices. They don't have a car, so it's like people run around and they try to be everything to everybody, and they try to say, "Oh, well, you know what? I have the best this and this, that, and you should be in it too." And people are like, "Why should I be in it? Because it's a great product." Okay, yeah, and. You know, there's no passion behind it. There's no feelings that are invoked. There's no target market. So when people jump on MySpace, and I'm guilty of it myself, a year and a half ago when I got um, my first computer, <laughs> I actually, you know, did the whole banners, and I had like 19 Zango videos on it, and I had every clickable link you could think of, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, um, I learned it, you know, slowly but surely, and I kept asking people to be my friends, and people were sh straight out, no, I don't want to be your friends, I'm not here to be sold, you know, get a life, stop spamming me, and I was like, what is spamming, and what is, you know, uh, phishing, and all that stuff, because I didn't know the terminology, but 
I was so, I remember this one lady, Marion, she actually um, sent me a message back that was very like, look, I'm not here to be sold. I mean, she went into detail and she scared me so much and, and made me feel bad that I took everything down and I just decided to put everything about me. And I was like, I'm just going to be friends. MySpace is not a good place to do business. I mean, it's just not, right? That's what my thought was. Well, <laughs> I got all these friends later and, you know, a thousand friends and 1,500 friends. And then everybody started asking me, what is it you do for a living? So I'm like, crap, you know, I didn't want to do both. So I started a whole separate page with all, you know, Zango videos and all the banners and stuff. And I had exactly eight friends, one being Tom, and the other seven were people that I actually knew in Zango, which was like, okay, well, this sucks. Nobody really cares what I do. They were just asking. But when I found the MLM Goldmine system, when it found me, I should say, and I learned how to let go of all that old uh, employee or network marketing old school ways, which is like spam, you know, pitch, 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 sell, 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 three foot rule. When I started getting clear on who I was and, and what I want to relate to, I mean, I don't want to relate to like a young, you know, punky kid who really doesn't care about what network marketing is. And I don't want to be, you know, targeting anybody in three feet of me who's like an old grouchy person who's been burned on the last 40 years of network marketing who hates it and, you know, and I'm trying to convince him to get in, you know, or he gets in for a couple months. So when I started to refine who I was and started realizing it's not about the product, guys. It's not about, it's about who I am and who my target market is and who I can relate to. I can relate to moms. I can relate to single moms. I can relate to anybody who's been in, abu in abused relationships or on welfare. I can relate to very passionate entrepreneurs who feel stuck, who feel like they love their product or they love their company, but they're just so tired of hitting people on the head and trying to convince them to stay or convince them to get a list of 100 friends and family or convince them to even show up to a home meeting or get on a phone call. You know, I I'm, I'm can relate to people who used to sit there or, you know, who sit there every day and go to their job and feel like they just want to die, like they want to run out of that office as fast as they can and go out there and just leave that area because they feel like they're suffocating and they feel like they're unimportant and they're not having any kind of impact on the world and they know that's not who they really are. I can relate to any of the people in the entertainment industry who if you have that bug and it spits you, you'll never let it go. You know, um, I'm getting back into modeling. I've been doing it ever since I was eight on and off and stuff and that's where my real passion is outside of businesses. I love to do anything in the entertainment industry. I have a lot of friends in it. I've been in it. Um, but I've always given to other people first and not really focused on myself. So now it's my turn. So, like, I can relate to those people, but I can't relate to people who are maybe a coal miner or somebody who's very bitter or somebody who's, you know, um, will send me a comment because I have a tongue ring and get mad about it. It's like, get over it. You know, I, this is who I am. If you don't like it, go with the other people who don't have tongue rings, you know. But... The point being, guys, is that if you don't know your passion and you don't know what your target market is and you're trying to be everything to everybody, you will be nothing to nobody because everybody's going to be tired of you and they won't even know why it is you're contacting them. I've had people contact me just because they were uh, growing up as an army brat like I did or people contact me because they're like, oh my God, you know, I'm in Zango too or because they like my makeup, you know, and they, they want to know how I do it or whatever the case may be, but they contact me because they connect with me and there's some kind of emotional, you know, um, they get an emotional rise out of my story on MySpace or my videos or things like that. So that's the point, guys. Know who your target market is. Learn how to finesse yourself and be successful in a way where people come to you and you're not chasing them down. You're not getting the wrong people, you know, within three feet of you and you're not having your, your downline go up and down and up and down and up and down because people quit and people come and people quit and people come, you know. Like they say, 97% failure rate and there's a reason for it and you can't turn a tulip into a rose. So if you guys want to find me, know what system I'm using, how it's done for me, why it is I don't pitch anymore, I don't carry business cards, I don't, you know, tell anybody what I do unless asked, and yet I'm very successful doing it, go ahead and find me. I'm at www.myspace.com forward slash miss, M-S underscore Izzy, I-S-S-Y. Or you can find me on youtube.com forward slash quick, Q-U-I-K, there's no C in quick, Witted, W-I-T-T-E-D, woman, W-O-M-A-N. Or you can find me at Isabel Marie, I-S-A-B-E-L-M-A-R-I-E, 1313 at gmail.com. Kuna guys. Have a great day. And if you're a mom, go get this book. If you're any person out there that has a chicken soup for the soul book that they can relate to, go get it and read it. You'll love it. Have a great day. They're not paying me to say this. <laughs> But I, I like to promote what I believe in. Have a great day. God bless. Goodbye. Akuna Matata.